Hi everyone! Um, I'm about to give a talk on character design, creating with care. Um, my name is Sally Shepherd. So I'm the founder and director of Indie Studio Weird Games. I'm also a lecturer at the University of West London. I teach game design and I'm also involved with a load of non-profit organisations making the games industry a better place. And I do a little bit of outsourcing work here and there as an art director. So today I really want to talk about the importance of character design and the importance of creating characters empathetically and purposefully. So character design is crucial in making games. It enhances the player's experience. It's the conduit by which the player experiences the world. It influences their emotion, their connection, and their immersion in your game. And effective character design contributes to your game's success and to its longevity. So good character design is crucial. So who creates these characters? Well, normally there's a lovely team, or if you're like me and you're an indie, there's just a small team. Still lovely. Our concept artists and visual development artists who are instrumental in the world of video games. They bring ideas to life through concepts and visual art, and their work is the platform by which the game sits on top of, and it makes everything pretty. So as artists, what do we need to consider when creating characters that don't promote healthy narratives and we need to avoid perpetuating stereotypes? We need to think about the motivation, the background, the cultural context, and the narrative that we're promoting. So planning and research are crucial. This is the foundation of developing believable and relatable characters. So I want to talk a little bit about a concept called inclusive design. So what is inclusive design? Well, it's intentional creation of characters that represent diverse identities, backgrounds, and experiences. Inclusive character design not only creates better characters, but it actually improves your game, and we have the stats for that. Inclusive characters sell better. So what are the good points about inclusive character design? Well, it's the representation. It allows underrepresented groups to feel seen and validated. And when players encounter your characters who share these identities and experiences, it fosters a sense of belonging. And it helps break stereotypes and promotes empathy. It also expands your player base by creating characters that appeal to a wide number of people. Your video game attracts a larger and more diverse audience. So as I was saying, this increases sales, increases player engagement, and builds a strong sense of community around your game. Inclusive design recognizes that players come from various backgrounds, that we are all different, and therefore our avatars, our characters, should represent us, the players. So it also enriches your storytelling. By offering a broader range of perspectives and by allowing your player to experience things that maybe they haven't in everyday life, you're giving them a different worldview. And by telling authentic stories, it leads to more compelling stories and again helps the sales of your games, helps the reviews of your games. So always be thinking about the story that you're telling and how your character enhances that storytelling rather than detracts from it. It also opens the door to a lot of creative opportunities. It encourages innovation in character development, breaking away from traditional stereotypes. We can explore unique character concepts. Also, personally, I get sick of something called same face syndrome, which is where all characters look the same across the whole game. So I love having those little points of difference in my games. And video games also have a significant influence on popular culture, so it's our job as designers to provide our players with interesting characters, diverse characters, and real characters. So sometimes you're given a player character that is already pre-designed for you, and sometimes you have character customization. By allowing character customization in your games, you're allowing your players to create characters that reflect their own identities, and studies show that this actually leads to more empathetic gameplay, allowing the player to layer their own identity on top of this visual representation of themselves. So this is the bit that shows that we have a little bit more work to do in the industry. So 80% of all main characters are men, 55% are white, but in the UK we have 50% of players identifying as female, so why do these stats not reflect their player base? Part of this, and part of my thinking, is that it's the fact that there are only 30% of workers in 
we industry that identify as female. So by not having those voices in the room, we're not seeing the output of strong female characters, we're not seeing the output of strong ethnically diverse backgrounds in the room. So we need to get more people into the industry to create better characters, have more voices in the room. Um, and you can check out the UQ census, which is a really, really great place to find statistics on the games industry. And when we're talking about diversity, we don't just need to think about race and gender. There are many, many traits that come in under that umbrella of diversity. Socioeconomic background, age, occupation, nationality, disabilities, all of these things need to be thought about, not just having a sort of token character that has one characteristic slightly different than the norm. So what do we do as artists to improve? How do we create better characters? Well, number one is education and research. By educating ourselves about different cultures, ethnicities and genders, we can create better characters. Number two, collaboration and consultation. One of the things I'm saying about having more diverse voices in the group, that means that you can actually consult and collaborate on the different groups that maybe you don't represent, but you can actually make sure that you're not promoting a harmful narrative. Visual representation. So when we're looking at our characters, we need them to have a range of physical appearances, body types, hair textures, facial features, and we need to avoid tokenism. So in a lineup of white characters, there shouldn't just be one non-white person. There should be a range of different features. And cultural signifiers. So incorporate cultural signifiers into your clothing, accessories, and symbols, but remember to do this thoughtfully and empathetically. You can't just slap a symbol on a character and say it's diverse, we have to do all the research, we have to do all of that self-learning first about what we're using, otherwise we can end up slipping into harmful narratives. So this is a point that I really want to make, because sometimes you get characters that have that diverse feature, but it's just one thing, and it's their entire personalities. So we have to think about intersectionality, and that means that people have overlapping identities and experiences. So we need to explore characters with diverse layers and dimensions to them. We shouldn't just have one-dimensional characters. And challenging stereotype is number six. So we should subvert or seek to challenge these stereotypes or these biases in character design. Normalization, this is portraying diverse characters in everyday setting, not solely focusing on their differences but allowing them to just be characters and have normal lives as well. So in our NPCs, in our background characters, there should be a diverse range. It shouldn't just be our main character that has that one point of difference. And of course, sensitivity and empathy. So whenever we're approaching character design, we need to be empathetic about our character design, take criticism on board and be okay to change. So one of the things when I'm teaching at university that I like to talk to my students about is appropriation versus appreciation. So appropriation is taking elements from a culture that we don't understand and just slapping them on our character and we can end up with some bad results. Um, I've included an example just here um, of a canonically Egyptian character who has a Native American skin paste on her. Why for? So appreciation involves respectfully incorporating cultural elements and understanding their context. So doing that work, looking into the educating ourselves and making sure that we're promoting with genuine respect for that culture. So not every game is designed specifically for you. I have to check myself on this all the time. I'm not going to love every game, and that's not just from a design point of view. Sometimes I hate the mechanics of the game, sometimes I don't like the story of the game. That's okay. There is more than enough games to go around. Um, my favorite saying is that not every game is going to be your cup of tea, but there is more than enough tea. 34 games a day are released on Steam. So that's one single platform per day, 34 games, and then you've got Xbox Game Pass, you've got PlayStation Store, you've got apps, mobile, Switch. There are more than enough games to go around. There's more games than we're ever going to be able to play. So empathetic character design involves understanding the human experience and representing a range of emotions, motivations, and perspectives. And as designers, we achieve this by crafting well-rounded personalities and giving our characters believable flaws and strengths. In conclusion, just to wrap up everything I've said, character design is a powerful tool that allows us to create immersive, impactful experiences in gaming, but it's essential that we approach this character design with care, responsibility, and empathy. So by creating characters with depth and authenticity and relatability, we foster emotional connections with our players. Basically, it's good all around. We also 
also get better sales, we have better reviews, and we create characters that our players can enjoy and resonate with. And does anybody have any questions? Resources for learning about how to fit characters with good representation. Um, yes, so I don't have one specific resource because you want to be looking at multiple different places to get your information from. Um, it sounds really lame, but a good Wikipedia search is a good place to start, but then following off on those hyperlinks and looking at actual scholarly information is sometimes good, so a good Google Scholar search is great. I tend to try and look at the, the culture that I'm specifically looking at if I'm, if I'm trying to incorporate that into my design and make sure that I understand any symbols or iconography that I'm using, that it's not something that has some connotation that I don't understand and that, again, I, so I grew up in New Zealand, for those of you who don't know, and we have an indigenous people called Māori, and in recent years a lot of their symbols and cultural points have been taken and used for representation, avatar, way of author, um, and sometimes using that as a dressing for a fantasy world, it gives a point of interest, but it's also for getting all of the religious and cultural significance to that people without involving them in the process. So I would always say, no matter what you're doing, circle back and make sure that you're having somebody double check your work. I like to call it sanity checking. So I get the community that I'm trying to represent involved, and I'm like, hey, is this really bad? <laughs> is this good? What do you think? And I try and always involve them in the loop. And that's basically my resource is Wikipedia, a good Google search from reliable sources, art books, um, the local library is a great one to get cultural sort of information, historical information, and then involving the community in your design process. Perfect. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you for listening. Hopefully this was helpful if you're thinking about coming into the industry and uh, designing characters, or if you're just interested in how character design works. You can find me at any of these links here. Um, thank you so much for listening.